Okay. okay. It's recording. Oh my gosh, look at that! I'm going to put a filter on it. And do you mind just when I'm, if I'm not here, if there's anyone yeah. in the waiting oh, yeah. room, I'll let you Yep. Okay. Hi, Sage. Hi. Are people ready to start with the beeswax kits? Nice. Great. Okay. So the first step, well, I'll show you. This is one that I made earlier with the little ladle guy. Yeah, the casserole. And so if you got the kit from us, um, there's probably some loose little frills. And if you want to take scissors, you can trim those off. Or a little tip. If you cut the corners on all sides, like if you fold it and then go and cut that, it makes it a giant circle to put over a big bowl. And um, so after you trim it, you're gonna wanna preheat your oven and it's just to the lowest setting. So one between 150 Fahrenheit to 200, anywhere there is good. I love getting to see into other people's kitchens. <laughs> yeah. uh, the flow in this kitchen is so weird. I can't even explain. The stove is weird? No, the, the flow of the kitchen. Oh. It's like the weirdest setup kitchen I've ever. <laughs> Non-intuitive kitchen. Is it 175, did you say? Or 125? Well, whatever the lowest setting is. So anywhere between 150 and 200 is good. But to be honest, I think it's pretty foolproof. So you're going to want to get a cookie sheet. And if you want to protect it from beeswax, you could put down some um, parchment paper or something that's like oven safe to go underneath. And then you um, either a paintbrush or you can use, oh, yes, Sage. How hard is it to clean the beeswax off of a, a cookie sheet afterwards if you skip the tin foil? It's very hard. Sue says it's really hard. Don't do it. <laughs> okay, great. I'll look for some tin foil. <laughs> I didn't have experience. Um, do you recommend tin foil or parchment paper? Parchment. Or does it matter? Parchment paper is better. I will do a little opening of our beeswax kit. Oh, parchment paper. Oh, the reveal. The yeah, reveal. So inside. Oh, there's two of them in there. A little paintbrush to spread oh. it. Hi, Kaylee. <laughs> so we're doing a beeswax wrap tutorial. It should be about 10 or 15 minutes. And then we're starting with hearing from you original members. Um, and then inside, we have these oh, little beeswax pebbles. Look how cute. Oh my god, and it's gold ink. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So cute. Uh, so I need to move you guys here. So you can take about two tablespoons or oh, there's a hair. It's not even mine. <laughs> Is it a dog's hair? It might be a dog's hair. Uh, two tablespoons or about half of what was in the packets in onto each one. Are we all at the same step? I um I just have my own beeswax. Yes. So do I just like crumple it or grate it to make it? It's just like a oh. the end of a candle. Yeah. So you can grate it with a cheese grater. Okay. So keep going, and I'll catch up. Okay. You'll need about two tablespoons per like a large size one or medium size one. We've got our ovens at 175. So as low as they will go. I'm going to zoom in on the banner. Mm -hmm. 
So we don't use all of the beeswax? No, you do. So divide it into two, onto the two um, patches. And okay. you're going to want to spread it as evenly as possible. And then make sure it's all along the edges. But if there's a little bit of space, it's okay because we're going to smooth it over with a paintbrush. Maybe Nana White. Oh, please. <laughs> Who's going to show us? Look at this. I'm doing it with my non-dominant hand, even. <laughs> Easy as pie. Ta-da! Yeah. Uh, thank you, Jack. Jackson. They like to decorate. Aww. So the beeswax is good because it's antibacterial. So that's what makes it a good food wrap. And some of the other, this is a basic recipe. It was from a website called homesteadandchill.com. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like 2020 if I ever heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there's other recipes that put more fancy things in there, like jojoba oil and pine resin, and then it's more supple and apparently lasts longer. But with these ones, um, once it gets, it get, kind of gets flaky over time, but you just put it back in the oven at the same temperature when it does that, and you can add some extra beeswax and it'll all be smooth again. How's it going with your beeswax cap? I'm just breaking it up. I didn't get a patch either, but I've got this nice bee fabric. So oh, perfect. I'm just putting little bits. They're not as small as your guys's, so it might be a bit clumpy, but I'm okay to experiment. Yeah. And if it's all clumped in one area, you have infinite chances to put it back in the oven and move it around. So Sweet. it's very low risk activity. I'm just randomly holding the lamp. Thank you. Everyone is saying congratulations on our 10 years. Oh. <laughs> that was a ladle prom, uh, what's it called, like photo booth decoration? Oh, this one? Yeah. <laughs> uh. I'm just going to keep dancing around with it. <laughs> what is ladle prom? Oh, that's like a ladle prom, yeah. It was a kind of volunteer appreciation end of year party where everybody would get dressed up and there'd be a theme and have a <laughs> like a funny like fake prom basically. It was pretty fun. <laughs> we did karaoke. Uh, we had a photo booth. What else did we do? I think we made like seed bombs one year. Seed balls. Yeah. And dancing. Alrighty, you think they're ready to go? In yeah, the we can put these guys in the oven. Yeah. They're kind of overlapping, and I'm interested to see what's going to happen with that. Okay. Yeah. Yay! Oh, you have sunglasses <laughs> on. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then once you put it in, Nico, you can just um, put the fan back on. I just turned it down because it was very loud, but the fan is the one in the middle, the black one, and if you hit it to high, yeah, there we go. All right, okay, so those are in the oven, and they should be in there for about five minutes or until it's all totally melted, um, but it, you don't have to flip it over or anything. It'll melt all the way through. Um, and so maybe while it's going, I can show you a little slide show. Can we do introductions too? Can you do what? Like, can we, did you guys already do introductions? Cause I was a little bit late. I did not do introductions. Do you want to start, Sage? 
Sure. Uh, my name's Sage. Right now I'm the communications coordinator at the Ladle, and I started September 2019. Um, but I was a frequent eater at the Ladle between 2013 and 2016. Um, and what else? Um, I don't know if I told you my pronouns are she and her yet. Maybe I did. Um, yeah. Oh, I also wanted to show you, I have a beeswax wrap that I got at Christmas. Whoa. And my favorite move is to take a can. Now I can go in the fridge without Dang. any more effort. <laughs> Sage, I hope you tell us that apple cider vinegar story that I've been waiting to hear for now a week at some point. Yeah, it's it's cute. I have my notes. Oh, nice. <laughs> I've been waiting 10 years to hear that story. Do <laughs> you want to introduce yourself, Pat? Sure, I had to unmute myself. I have all my supplies all over my computer. Uh, <laughs> my name is Cap. I work as the finance coordinator at the Little Little right now. Um, I started in 2016, so it's been a few minutes. Um, love to eat the food. Don't make the food. Love to make spreadsheets. <laughs> uh, I use she and her pronouns and I'm happy to be here. Nice. Now I'm just starting from the top corner of my screen. So Asha and Emma, do you want to introduce yourselves? Hi, um, I'm Isha. I use she and her pronouns. I've been volunteering at the Ladle for um, like a year and a half now, and I've been on the board for about half that time. Um, I assume you all. Hi, I'm Emma. I also use she and her pronouns. Um, I six months, I guess. I've been helping Isha do the food box deliveries. Um, yeah, that's been so helpful. Months. Nice. Lorraine, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, my name is Lorraine. Um, I use she and her. Uh, I am the Sexton coordinator at Vero and I'm working since uh, November of 2019, yeah. Nice. And she made that amazing 10 year anniversary background yeah. and I couldn't even figure out how to get it on my screen. <laughs> um, Kelly, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh my god. Hi! Uh, we're just unloading some groceries right now and making our wraps. We're so happy to be here tonight. Oh, nice. Oh, there's a Kaylee and a Kylie, I think. Yes. <laughs> what happened? Kaylee, do you want to introduce yourself? Other one? <laughs> Uh, I'm Kaylee and yeah, Nico mentioned that this party was happening and um, yeah, there's always been lots of Kayleys. <laughs> so um, it was like part of the ladle like 10 years ago. Uh, so it felt really wild and special to get to join folks tonight and um, she, her pronouns. Nice. I'm so glad that you made it. How did everyone just joining in on Instagram live too? We've got some current volunteers joining in. Right. Um, Xander, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, my name's Xander, uh, or Alexander, but I go by Xander. Um, and I'm also uh, not quite as original as Kaylee and Sonia, um, <laughs> but pretty pretty much right there um, from the, the very early days. Um, and I now live in a tiny little part of New Brunswick, St. Stephen, um, outside of St. Stephen. Um, so if you were driven from Halifax to Toronto, you probably drove through St. Stephen, through Maine. Um, and I work as a, a community planner out here. Um, and this is, this is so awesome. Like it, 
I remember going back to Dow for years ago and seeing the sign and being like, this is amazing. And then now getting to see everybody today and like that it's going and that it's thriving and that people are, are still doing the same things that we did and building on it is just so amazing. So thank you to you all for organizing this and, and for, for keeping it going. Thank and you. Pronouns. Okay. Um, I wanted to mention that Sanders sent me a document with a bunch of ladle history and then I put it in the loaded ladle 10 year anniversary Look zine. Look at that zine. Um, which if you come by dial during the servings, there's still copies for free. And Sonia, I, I would love for you to introduce yourself, but I need to check on my beeswax wrap. It's in the back of my mind back there. <laughs> Um, should we watch the process do you want to narrate we're looking for oven mitts, we're looking for the oven mitts. Oh, okay it's a constant struggle <laughs> they're somewhere different every day uh totally. try low on the card across from the steam kettle <laughs> somewhere different throughout the day also five seconds later it's moved. yeah they were on the kettle pot <laughs> are those silicone oven mitts they are, and they're two different colors. One's got oh. black, one's got red. We should do a little kitchen tour. They did. They already did. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, hi, my name's Sonia. I use she and they pronouns. Um, I'm calling from New Mexico. I live in Santa Fe right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, I'm actually moving back to Halifax in a few months to start a job at Dell, so that's exciting, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to hopefully um, meeting some of you all um, and seeing the ladle in action, which is, um, can't wait, and maybe eating some soup. Um, and uh, yeah, I was, uh, uh, along with Kaylee and Xander, involved in the ladle back in the um, in the early days, 2009 uh, to 2012, kind of those days. So I'm excited to talk some more about that and also just celebrate with you all. I'm so grateful to you for um, continuing this work and, and for letting us know about the party today. Um, it's, uh, it's like, yeah, I could gush and gush, but the little is like, uh, kind of changed my life, you know, and I, I think Xander and Kaylee would say the same thing. And so it's super cool to, to see you all here today. Uh, thanks. Hi, Misha. Hi, Fran. Hi. Hi. We were just doing a little go around of how, how we know the ladle or how we've been involved. Um, I can go next. Um, my name is Sue. There's also many Sues involved in the ladle. Um, I've been part of the ladle since 2014, so I feel like I'm kind of like a, the grandma of the group right now. <laughs> um, so I do programming at the ladle, solidarity serving. Once upon a time I did finance, which was kind of funny because I don't know anything about finance. <laughs> and then we hired cops and I was like, thank God. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, the ladle is a big part of my life and I really love meeting new people, seeing how people kind of gain confidence and build community and especially students that might not know a lot about the history of the book tip or like different social movements happening, like trying to bridge those gaps is a really awesome part of the job. Um, yeah, and it's, it's nice to see people that started the ladle. I'm excited to hear more of your stories and like, how did this all happen? How are we here now in this kitchen? Yeah. I just want to interrupt for a minute from introductions if people want to check their beeswax wrap because mine was totally ready. Uh -huh. And uh, so it looks wet and then the spots that are dry, I just brushed it over and then pretty much once it's all brushed over, it's important that you hang it right after and it's not gonna drip beeswax or anything. And then it'll dry really quickly and be ready to use. Yay! You wanna hold it yeah. up or is Should that gonna I... be too tricky maybe? I think I can. Yeah. Nico's gonna hold one of them up. It's already drying. It might be. 
don't know if you can really tell. Maybe it's anticlimactic, but it looks beautiful. <laughs> it's covered in beeswax. <laughs> it looks the way it looked before, but it did work very well. I need so I'm sort of a direction. Formally, oh, go ahead, Sage. I was just about to say I'm informally making like a speaker's list. I see Sage's hand is up. Feel free to just uh, chime in when you want. But if we start uh, talking over each other, I'll start taking a speaker's list. But for now, just say what you got to say. Okay, I think Maybe. I'm going to stop the Instagram live. Yes, too. Good call. So anyone who's watching Instagram live right now and wants to keep on, um, if you go to our bio on Instagram, you'll see a little um, a link to join the Zoom. If you click on that, it'll take you right to the Zoom. We're going to stop the live. And you'll see what's happening to Instagram live and the Facebook. But we will hopefully see you all there. Thank you. So, Happy <laughs> so I talked with um, Sonia and Kaylee and Xander and told them that they could tell the story of the loaded ladle and how it began and take any questions in the first hour or so. So I think we should move along to that unless somebody wants to introduce themselves quickly before we go. That joined after. I think Sage and Misha have their hand up. Oh. First, Nico. Yes. Hard to see there. Uh, what, could you give me more directions on hanging it? Like, what What do you mean exactly? You can hang it on anything like, uh, my words are gone, a hanger in a closet, like a clothes hanger. Or even if you move um, like on your stove on the little bar that you can put a dish towel, you can hang it there or in a dish rack. Great. And Actually, I'm going to let them go first and then say my thing. I was just, I heard you say hour, and I just don't have a lot of time. So I wasn't sure how long the intro was going to take. If anybody could let me know how long you're planning for that. For the introductions? Yeah, like the intro of how the ladle got started and everything. Oh yeah, that won't take an hour. That will probably take what, maybe like six or seven minutes or something. Oh, okay. Then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I'll put my hand up later then. Okay. Just, I have to leave soon. Okay. Okay, great. So, Sonia and Kaylee and Xander, the floor is yours to tell us how it got started, why it got started, any struggles you had along the way. Okay. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Hi again. Um, great. Um, it's so nice that we already did introductions. And I know some of you a little bit virtually now. Um, hi. Uh, great. <laughs> great. Cool. So um, I, I made a couple notes, but my memory is foggy. So I'm going to try to just let me Oh, and Nico, um, I was going to show some a couple photos that I pulled up from the archives. Um, yeah. Should I just share my screen for that? Yeah, that'd be awesome. I did okay. put some that you sent me into the slideshow, but please show some photos. Yeah, cool. I'll just I'll share that when I um, when I'm when I find when, when I get to that place. Nice. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So um, yeah, what I remember um, so to back up, uh, I was at Dal um, from 2008 to 2012, did my undergrad there. And um, I, what I remember um, about the ladle getting started was going to an orientation at Ennisburg um, in the fall of 2009, pretty early on. Um, it was kind of like a an open house that they were doing for uh, folks who wanted to learn more about the working groups that Ennisburg had or who were interested in maybe joining a, or forming a new working group. And I remember it was a really sunny day. There was a lot of sun pouring into that um, office. Is Ennisburg still on the like third floor? No, of the sub? but I know that beautiful office that you mean with the big windows. It's like the SU staff offices now. 
Okay. Our, op- our office is actually the opposite. It's in the basement with no windows. Yes. So. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, so picture kind of like a scraggly group of like 19 year olds mostly, but maybe also of different ages sitting on a, on a floor um, in a sunny room on a kind of old carpet. Um, ah. And um, talking about trying to figure out how to do some form of like anti-capitalist organizing on campus. Um, 2009 was kind of a moment in a lot of ways. Um, And I think we were all kind of grasping at sort of what, trying to figure out our politics and trying to figure out what what kind of work we might wanna do that was in line with Ennis Berg's like broader sort of principles and commitments around social and environmental justice. And we, I don't remember how exactly, um, maybe Kaylee does, but we landed around on food. Um, I think cause it was, it was like a place, a point of interest of common interest for a lot of different reasons um, for those of us who were there. And after a few different meetings, we, we thought that one way to, um, w- one, one way to kind of move forward some of our goals um, politically was to challenge the the contracts that the university had, um, these exclusivity contracts that Dal and the student union had with these big um, corporations, Sodexo and Aramark. Um, And so at the time, I I, I don't know. and, And also let me know if this is kind of, you know, stuff that you all all know, but uh, Dal and the Student Union had um, contracts with Sodexo and Aramark that gave those companies the exclusive right to provide food on campus and dining halls uh, for Sodexo, I believe, and Aramark had the exclusive right to do catering. Um, And we thought that this uh, was bad, not only because like the food was pretty crappy um, and uh, not locally sourced, did not support local economies, was, was never, we had no confidence that it was like sustainably harvested. Um, but it also like these corporations were sort of, you know, giants in the food world and, and also in the, in the, in the, um, in the prison and in industrial complex, um, Aramark especially had contracts, I think still does with, with a lot of prisons. And we were just kind of like, why is our university, um, supporting this and and why are there not allowed to be any other options i see sage is um sharing some other um some some information about the current uh state of contracts thank you for that um yeah so uh so the the way we started we're like okay we want to provide another option for now um and we we started um basically trying to figure out how we could serve some food and some of our members had connections with local farmers um so we got some kind of scraps that didn't sell at the farmer's market um from good folks like uh Hutton's farm if you know Ted Hutton and that farm stand we also had a good connection with the Middle Eastern Bakery on Agricola Street um and they would kind of let us know when they were going to put out their day old pita bread sort of carefully wrapped at the top of their dumpster and we would just go pick it up. Um, and I think, <laughs> it was just... I think it was like a specific special clean dumpster for it. Yeah. I, I feel like we need to specify that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I used no, to very... call that the free PETA resource center. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was also, it was super nice. And the bread was like actually really fresh. It was just like maybe like, you know, half a day old. Um, yeah, Peter from Middle East. Um, oh, awesome. And um, and then I think also the store that used to be called Planet Organic off of Quimple um, also had a good dumpster. Um, we had some relationships with them. And, and so at the beginning, you know, we had no money except for maybe a couple hundred bucks from NS Perg as a working group. Um, and so we were kind of, you know, working in that way, uh, getting getting free food that our partners would would provide and, and cooking it up in the women's center, um, which used to be across from the sub on I think South Street, um, and we uh, 
we went to, we would, we would basically set up in the, in the, on the first floor of the sub and um, we'd have these big pots. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the cookware initially was, was um, made available to us because um, uh, some of our original members were, were the, were Aaron and Zoe Beal who, um, uh, children of, of Dee Dee's ice cream. And so their family had access to a lot of really, um, lo a lot of cooking equipment um, that lent itself to, to bulk uh, production. And so, yeah, we, we made a bunch of soups. Um, we'd set up with a little plastic table and a bunch of yogurt containers that we had salvaged and people would come in and just scoop some soup and pita bread or whatever else we had. And usually this would last for a few hours. We'd make a lot of food, but then once the fanfare kind of like dissolved around us, security guards from the university would come and kind of start kicking us out because, because of the exclusivity contracts that the university had, it was actually, you know, we were breaking the rules by doing that. And as we drew more attention to ourselves by doing this, the women's center, um, you know, got a little bit, was a bit worried about losing some of their funding or, um, you know, getting in trouble with the university, which was a real risk. So they, we needed to stop using their kitchen. Um, and meanwhile, you know, uh, some of our members were also students at King's and had sprung up um, an adjacent collective that they called Kafka, um, Campus Action on Food at King's or something like that. Um, and, and so we used a the kitchen there for a bit. And that fall and winter, we started doing solidarity servings in Halifax. Um, I remember we, I don't really remember what solidarity servings we did, but we would drive around or ride around town on bikes with trailers um, and big pots of, of soup um, and other items that we would serve at protests, sort of similar to Food Not Bombs and often alongside them. Um, and so that kind of became an important part of like us trying to figure out what kind of work we wanted to do. Um, and then another thing, so maybe now I'll try to figure out, I'll, I'll try to share my screen because I wanted to share, this was a, another thing that kind of became, um, that, that took a lot of our, our time in the, um, the spring, you're gonna see how many tabs I have open, which is a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> um, let's I see. can relate. Yeah. <laughs> um, so as we were kind of building, do you see this? Yes. Yep. Okay, you, you see like a Safari page, Halifax Media Co-op? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so as we were kind of building solidarity and relationships with like local farmers, um, it was also in, in 2010 now, in the winter, winter, spring 2010, the G8 was going to be meeting in Halifax. Um, there were a lot, there was a lot of organizing happening in advance of that. And um, um, we're, we're hooked in with La Via Campesina, um, just, which is, um, uh, well, they describe themselves as an international peasants movement, a group of workers, indigenous folks, um, uh, farmers movements across the world, and who were really that year having a big push around um, day of action. And so Campus Action on Food or CAF at the time, along with Kafka and, and other partners put a lot of energy into organizing um, this day of action. And um, it, it, it was actually, it was a blast um, and it brought together a lot of folks um, in the community and, and more broadly kind of in Nova Scotia as, as farmers came out. I just wanted to show you a few photos cause it, it was fun for me to look at these from, from the archive. Um, yeah, it's hearing you talk about the timeline and like, okay, this doesn't actually make sense seeing it now, but I very much in my brain, I have that as like the first thing I ever organized was that like Via Campesina day. Totally. Yeah. I kind of like forgot about it. And then I saw all these photos and I was like, oh my goodness, like, cause this came before Edible Campus even like, oh, yeah, yes, it did. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, I don't a, remember. I was not a, a year before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or like the I fall. Was the edible campus. That's <laughs> or we were trying to do it at the same time or something. Exactly. Yeah. 
That it, that was oh, Brad. that's so cute. Yeah, oh Brad, is still around. Brad is part of Food Against Fascism now. And they, oh, really? That's they cook amazing. in our kitchen on Thursday nights. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh there's Sonia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, there's Sonia. Is that Quincy? Like uh, this is not, but yeah. there's another Quincy in here. Okay. Um, some folks some uh, built some amazing puppets. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was so we marched from the farmers market to the commons. There's an original oh, banner. Oh, yes, we have that banner. Oh, uh, good. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, these are moving without me um, wanting them to. <laughs> sound like my. Uh, yeah, there's Brad. Um, this is Nick, I think, or Chris. Chris used to be on the board of Ennisburg. Um, and yeah, let me go to the next one. Um, oh, hold on that's coming yeah uh yeah these are just some other photos from that march but it was you know it was a kind of a big event and it kind of gave us a little bit of spotlight in the um in insofar as just building relationships with is the raging grannies the raging grannies mm -hmm. yeah and it's like so I think, oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Aww. Cute. Can I, like, I, sorry, Sonia, I don't know how you want us to sort of be pitching in or like. No, no, just go for okay. it. I have no okay. plans. There's a young Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like my sort of like plugging into the project happened like not with that like initial meeting, not with the sort of Perg open house, but because I was doing a different, much more like sort of a political like sustainability focused food project on campus and it wasn't like it was something that I'd sort of found in my first year of school but wasn't like quite jiving with my politics but at the same time I couldn't in any way like name why and I think that that project like connected with ours and I kind of like jumped ship um, <laughs> but, also, but also like just really feel like yeah, like Sonia and Ryan and Aaron and Gwen just being like so patient with sort of like we I feel like we were all figuring out our politics at the same time but also like in different ways and different speeds and just like the sort of like patience of the collective as well as NS Perg staff in like supporting us as we were like figuring out sort of like what we thought and like what was you know, a good idea and not and like not a good idea. And just like, sure. sort of like, I think Sue, like I thought about that as you were talking about the like potential to sort of like connect students to radical projects. I'm like, just even like the patience within the collective for me was like super critical to like developing that analysis and like, um, yeah, and like Sonia started was talking a bit about the solidarity servings, and I think that like even within that, just like figuring out, like I think we did some really awesome solidarity servings, and then we like supported some projects that were just like kind of weird, <laughs> and like figuring out like figuring out the politics through that and what we actually like were aligned with and wanted to say yes to and how to say no to things too. Mm -hmm. I was like a part of it, and like. I think this maybe comes a bit more later, but yeah, I think the like political piece being so important as it's also just like figuring out like the, yeah, the dynamics of like class and money and like Dalhousie as a space that has like, you know, a lot of like really struggling students and also a lot of like really freaking wealthy students and like just the kind of like navigation of how how is this project like sustainable for the people in it. And so that we're not just like, like there's a sort of like political motive behind it that isn't just like us busting our butts to give like <laughs> students who have a lot more like <laughs> privilege than us lunch, <laughs> um, which I think I'm sure will like in some ways come next with what Sonia's talking about because like CAF also just got like into a lot of like like became quite confrontational with the like student union at the time and like really became like a, a site of like just like struggle. <laughs> Yeah, totally. And I'm, I'm so glad you brought up the kind of, I mean, I think I look back on this time as like, 
with, with so much fondness. And also it's like, it's like when I learned how to cook, it's when I, you know, it's also kind of like, I had to readjust my, I had to start taking, I had to reduce my course load so that I could take and take classes in the summer so that I could like spend more time organizing with calf because, uh, and, and I mean, and I wanted to do, you know, like it was, it was a hundred percent what I wanted to do. Um, but it was like, it, it, we were all really kind of like committed and driven, but it also kind of took over, um, in, in these ways, especially as some of, as, as we kind of like started getting some heat from the university administration and from, um, like a relatively small, but powerful, um, like conservative faction in the student body, um, and I think we first started really seeing that. Well, we saw it when we saw it when we would get kicked out for giving kicked out of the student union building for giving away free soup. But we also saw it with the project that came next, which is Edible Campus. Um, and Kay, I remember working a lot, Kaylee and I, like, I think we um, at the beginning, this was like, OK, Kaylee and I were like bo- bottom lining this or something. And um, uh, we were our whole group was really inspired by. Uh, a project at McGill of the same name where students there who had a really successful food co-op had um, uh, basically used, built container gardens to um, uh, grow grow food on concrete spaces. And so like turn concrete into green space. Um, And we thought this was a great idea. We thought we could use the food for our cooking and um, and we thought it would be something that would be kind of like universally embraced. And it turned out that it really wasn't. Um, and we, you know, that spring, I think shortly, like concurrent to this, um, international Peasants Day protest, but also, especially afterwards, like we spent a lot of time visiting the greenhouse on campus. There was a ton of room, but they wouldn't give us access to it, um, to start seedlings and, um, Eventually we, we built these, um, we, we used the same mo- uh, container gardening model that they had at McGill. Um, we salvaged most of these materials. This is really cool, um, oops, I'm sorry. Uh, Tupperware mm. program or situation. Sorry, I, can't, I don't know why they, I'm like. There's a pause button. Oh gosh, I'm like, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah okay. Um, so basically there's like, um, there's a piece of PVC pipe that feeds into the bottom of the container and there's a little platform inside or in the bottom and um, uh, underneath this platform. And um, it's a really simple, easy to build from salvage materials design. And they were really productive. Um, but we fought for months and months and months uh, with the administration and could not get was not being used. Um, and this was, I think, when we really started like actually communicating with the administration and like kind of kind of fighting back. And I, I think we had a lot of small wins in this. Um, but ultimately, you know, when we did get a space to use on campus. We had this great little opening party. Um, There's Sarah McLean, if anyone uh, remembers Sarah. It was a really festive day, um, but it was on grass. Um, And that that was kind of a bummer because that was not the point of of the container garden. And um, I think as as you'll read in your zines, uh, Xander documented in the the history, this was was like really kind of became a fight about aesthetics on, on campus. Um, and it like, I forget all of the details, but because we were growing our own food, Ennisburg ended up having to take out extra insurance, yeah. like liability insurance for like, what if someone gets salmonella from eating our kale and like, what if, yeah, what if like a dog pees on the tomatoes oh and God. it was like one of those, I think, interest like into some of the wins too, I think is again, just like in some senses, like also sharpening our analysis of how like systems and structures of power work. Like Mm -hmm. the space we eventually got was like on student union property, which is like different than Dalhousie property. And I think that like 
you know, we had many meetings with the admin and very much just like, it, like it very much like solidified this stance of like the campus is not actually for students yeah. um, or students have no agency over this space. Um, and all, but also like the structures of how, like the like tactics that are used by like people in power to sort of crush community projects of like, um, you know, finding technicalities so that like, um, like finding technicalities that sound reasonable, like, or just like delaying and delaying and delaying. And I think that that's something that like has come out of it, like, which I think is an important lesson for student organizers is just like the tactics that admins will, admin will use to like crush student organizing, like by just delaying till the sort of main um, people involved graduate. Um, which ultimately is one reason why I think like the ladle and perg are like awesome to have the sort of like continuation so that things don't just like fall away. Totally. There's and I mean, I, th I think it's like after, oh, sorry. Go oh, I was just gonna say there's the Dell, right now there's the urban garden at Dell, there's the Dell Urban Garden Society. Um, and the ladle has been able to use some of the food from the garden, but other than that, like the Dell administration doesn't want anyone to eat out of the garden and I think those are the similar ideas where they were like what if a, a dog pees on the kale someone will get sick yeah so it's supposed to be kind of like a learning garden is yeah. Seymour Green still there it so it's moved it was on Seymour and it's yeah. kind of like the new iteration of Seymour Green it's behind the Goldberg uh computer science building Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, just a couple I, blocks over from the sub. Yeah, I think I helped set that garden up, but Seymour Green right. was going to continue along, and then I guess at some point it wasn't going to continue. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Sage, did you have your? Did you have a question? Briefly, but uh, I changed my mind. <laughs> right on. Um, yeah, I just was going to say that I think because of some of the issues that Kaylee was bringing up, like we. I'm not exactly sure how this happened. And I think we had been talking for a while about wanting to form a cooperative and get develop kind of an infrastructure for ourselves um, that would allow us to sustain our work um, longer into the future and also um, more sustainably like for like as individuals and as an organization. Um, I think after we kind of put the garden to bed, um, and, and when I was reading Xander's history, I was reminded that we did this like die-in, which I actually have no memory of, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, but, I mean, I sort of do now that I read it, but um, <laughs> I remember right. like def I don't remember a Diane. I just hate Diane's. But like there was like I remember a funeral with Xander being a pallbearer. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there was like a funeral for the garden, which yeah. like uh, I think it actually went to Seymour Green and lived at Seymour Green okay. for a little while. Later. Yeah. Um, but in some senses too, that was us like picking up different tactics and like different organize like things that we could do. And we also just like, we also really just tried to fuck with Dal. Like, I think we were like, at some points it's like, yeah, we were, you know, in many ways, like I think reclaiming space on campus is important and like not having concrete is important, but also like, just like, it also just became like this struggle with the admin. Um, and I think like struggle on campus with the admin is also like good practice for struggle in, in the broader world. But like, we like ran a media strategy against them. Like we had like a full back page article of the Globe and Mail. This is like, Toronto based paper, like about this like, about that. yeah, wow. the, about the admin and how they like, Whoa. yeah, which just, just felt like a win in terms of like, you know, universities care so much about their like PR and like, it just felt like this way of like, ha you know, having a bit of like power or pushback there. Yeah, totally. public shaming works really well. <laughs> <laughs> Do any of you have a copy of that uh, newspaper article? 
I think my mom does. Yeah, I know so <laughs> family so members great. do because yeah. <laughs> it's so great to get a copy or a scan of that just for yeah. the little ladle archives. Sage, I see your hand up again. Yeah, I was just gonna say that it's really cool to hear you talk about how it, this was like a learning experience and a training experience. Um, I was talking yesterday on a panel and I was saying, they're asking about like, how do you do system change instead of like band-aid solutions? And something I said was like, like direct action is actually a really great way to learn like skills for deeper systems change and like a way to expose yourself to stuff like that. So it's cool to hear it like really borne out in the way your experiences happened. Totally. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And I think for us, one thing that like, and probably what Sonia is going to talk about next, just as things kind of formalized into like the ladle, there were so many conversations, like so many on how to have a more sustainable project, but like not lose the political like ferocity. Mm. And just because I think it, it can be this like there can be trade-offs and it can be like, we were like very keen on like not starting a project that was gonna like become too liberal was like, you know, <laughs> the, the sort of like way that, like it, it felt really important that it like, you know, the project was like a site of like struggle or like, and I'm sure as we've all kind of like, as our politics have like grown and changed, we can also like see the many different ways that like movements co-support each other. And it doesn't all just have to be about like fighting the DSU, but like, <laughs> um, <laughs> but that kind of like um, sort of, there was like such deep intention into like keeping the project um, radical, even if it became more institutionalized. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. And that, I mean, that was, it, 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 it was kind of such a microcosm of things that I think we all went on to do afterwards. Like, um, you know, we, we worked really hard the year before I forgot to mention this to like, make sure the person we wanted to got elected as student union president. Um, and like that helped with getting the levy laid down the road. Um, um, and I think like, we learned a lot from the folks who were, you know, our, our elders on the NSPERG board at the time. Um, some of us eventually kind of were on, were on the NSPERG board, but there was kind of a generation of um, folks who were, um, who were there um, to folks like Jane Kirby and um, Jean, whose name I'm, um, David Parker, you know, folks like that, who we really kind of, looked to and, and learned a lot from, um, and, but yeah, I mean, I, I can remember, we had so many, um, strategic retreats, uh, which were often just meetings in houses, um, often passing around a mate gourd that Aaron Beal would bring to every meeting. Um, <laughs> and we're really caffeinated. Actually. Uh, we didn't and we, drink yeah, we much. really like co-developed our immune systems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we were really riled up. Like we were really angry and also really like, um, yeah, but, but so, I mean, as, as Kaylee was saying, like we, we started looking towards um, shifting and after the edible campus stuff. And that's when we really started thinking about the student levy, I think. Um, and I was, I, I, I have, I have lots of like visual memories of meetings and some of the stuff that happened at this time and like late nights, late, late nights in the student union, um, uh, I don't know, chambers where um, I just still find it bizarre that these folks wore suits, but um, they did, uh, the, the student union uh, folks. And, um, and anyway, but I would love to turn it over to Xander or Kay Kaylee to kind of, I, I went away for one of those terms. Um, so I don't really remember much about the levy fight. I came back the following uh, term and I remember some of that, but um, yeah, do you want to 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Xander, you go. I was also on co-op that semester, but I feel like you and Rebecca did like the majority of that. Oh, I think Orion was really involved too. Mm. Um, so, I mean, I became involved around the end of Edible Campus and and also kind of like Kaylee came to the ladle through like, you know, oh, sustainability, like that kind of stuff that's good. Um, and then and then was sort of radicalized in this wonderful um, way that really <laughs> shaped me. Um, and part of what I remember, we had all these discussions about like, you know, that Tony was talking about, how do we keep our radical roots and and do something sustainable and and like pay the farmers because we were still just getting food for free and we actually wanted i think we wanted to be a part of the the larger economy and not just kind of pushing against everything and um and i think the fact that that y'all are still here 10 years later means we did something right in that um and have employed people and kept paying farmers and like it, it, I think we made the right decision somewhere along the way, but forming a co-op was a part of that. And I think, I don't remember exactly why we decided to do that. I think it was, you know, what we took, learned a lot of lessons from like Midnight Kitchen and McGill and People's Potato and, and Concordia and the, the other food co-ops across the country. And I was just like, oh, they, they did, they incorporated its cooperatives. This makes sense as a structure, it has a board, we're all equal. Um, <laughs> So and <laughs> it's funny because my my job now I deal with bylaws and like policies all the time and I love it so to me that sounds fun but I'm I'm a nerd for that <laughs> stuff, just like Ryan um so we decided to incorporate and and I think that also kind of got us out of the umbrella of Ennisburg like for I think we it was time for us to leave the nest so to speak oh. um, and fly on our own and uh have our own board and um so i think the original board was uh sonia and kaylee and myself and ryan and orion and uh maybe aaron, aaron? and Omri? Aaron, i don't know aaron, definitely aaron I still have that piece of paper you guys all signed in a binder. I forgot we were on the board. <laughs> Do we have that? Whoa. We don't remember that at all. <laughs> we have yeah. the, you all like, paid a two dollar membership fee and <laughs> and your Is that all the levies was on Creighton Street. I think it was Ryan's house. The yellow house. Yeah, the yellow house on Creighton. Oh, the yellow house. Yeah, which is no longer yellow, I don't think. Oh. Um. I think we still have 2010 minutes from some of those meetings. Oh my <laughs> and probably embarrassing. <laughs> I read them, so I don't know. Um, okay, so we incorporated as a co-op and, and we were still cooking out of uh, the King's Kitchen um, at Kafka. Hmm. And I don't remember exactly why we needed to stop, but we did. And, and my memories also aren't like linear really. So I don't, this might've happened before or after things, but we cooked very briefly at Dee Dee's kitchen. I think we needed a health certified kitchen. That was it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we could no longer, like once we, we, we basically sort of went legit and we were gonna start negotiating with the student union. We wanted money. Uh, we needed a levy so um i think we shifted our tactics a little bit from being kind of angry uh activists to like fun activists and i i think um still with anger but i think more like let's let's do fun things let's have like drum circles let's just create a really positive environment because when that gets shut down that's going to look really bad like and and we're going to get a lot more support um it's it's a cliche but like you're going to catch more flies with honey than with with vinegar um so i i think we we decided we wanted this levy so we could get it was going to be like twenty six thousand dollars or something um 
And somehow with that, we were going to employ two people and buy all our food and like, <laughs> I don't know how that made sense. We did have to put together a business plan, which none of us had any idea what we were doing. Um, and I think the student union needed a business plan to put the levy on a referendum. That was why we needed a business plan. So we had to convince them that this was going to be sustainable and that we weren't going to keep coming back for more and more money. I don't know exactly. Yeah. And it was all, like, it was partially like a structure and process and like reasonable things to think out in terms of like setting up a, a more long term and sustainable project that wasn't just like you know, killing us all, but like also was a lot of being jerked around. Like it was a lot of the DSU, the student union who had these like, yeah, future liberal party staffers working for them. Like, and, and just kind of like being like, what can we do to like make this difficult? <laughs> like, I think is sort of my analysis of what was happening in some ways or like it made, it felt very like, like I, it, I'm sure it felt very like legitimate in their heads, but it was also like a project that they didn't really like, like or support, or like wanted to shape and have a lot of like influence over. Like I feel like give up or not. <laughs> yeah, Tanisha, you gotta you gotta jump in and <laughs> you can't drop that bomb and not talk about it. <laughs> I think this is why Sue has been like giggling behind the mask there. <laughs> Who's quite aware of, I'm not sure which one of you was withdrew the day that you went in for your levy. Um, it was me that kind of took you on. And the reason was, and one of the greatest things that's happened with the Loaded Ladle, that if you look at your early pictures, and you look at your pictures now, I think you see the story, is that when you start it, and you start as every group does, you start as a group of like-minded people that knew one another. And in Nova Scotia, that tends to be a certain demographic of people. So when I first, and I was, before I even came to school, because um, I started again in 2012, I actually was alum already then, um, I had some workings with NS Perk, so I knew of what you were doing. I remember your march and all of that. But I also saw, and I wasn't the only one, this group of individuals what, that were predominantly white. And it was a collective and a group that I didn't see me in. So it was very hard when things came up and you weren't the only group that did this, but like when you folks were looking for the levy at the time, I remember having these conversations with, but why, how is it for every student? Um, I'm not vegan and I'm not in the demographic of people that seem to be part of your collective. And I understood what your platform was and I totally applaud the platform, but have to understand as a person of color, uh, both indigenous and, and Nova Scotian black, I've seen so many other groups come in and stand on our shoulders for their platform. So therefore I do take any group to task, but I do remember I was telling Sue this story the other day um, that at that levy um, meeting with the DSU, like I said, I was a council member. So I remember afterwards I was talking to Drew and I was saying something and I don't know, and I'll apologize if one of you people were the person that did it to me, but there <laughs> was somebody that was um, female presenting who like literally attacked me verbally about, you know, because they thought I was fighting you as a society, but that wasn't what I was trying to get at. I was just trying to say like, help me understand how this works for every student. That's where I was going with that. And I just remember, I'm like, oh my God, the vegans are attacking me. What a vicious group. <laughs> and, um, I, I've had a few, and I've had a few other run-ins with, um, with Loaded Ladle, not the, I shouldn't say Loaded Ladle, with people working at the Loaded Ladle or volunteering at the Loaded Ladle, sort of along the same lines. And uh, so I said, it wouldn't surprise me if I see a picture someday, like behind a door in the ladle with my face like as a dartboard, but anyhow. <laughs> Um, but the whole thing behind it 
And I remember, and I remember you, Cap. I remember the, like, and also you, Alexander, the things that you were working on then were like phenomenal. And I applaud it for being, for, for Ladle still being here. But I also applaud the fact that the inclusivity of Ladle has grown so much. And I think it's now a good story and a good thing to show other groups that yes, we started off as this group that looked like it was sort of like a private club and then became so much more. And I think that that right there is a very good political stance of how to go about something and that becomes inclusionary and that, and that also doesn't lose its message while doing so. So, um, but I do remember, and I remember our talks at that time in council about the loaded ladle. And I think it was funny because I remember you bringing your food um, so that we could have like try the vegan food. And I remember <laughs> that one time that there seemed to be like copious amounts of leftover salad mix. And somehow I got convinced to take a whole bunch home and I don't know why, but I did. <laughs> um, it got eaten, but it was like, why did I take all of this salad? Um, <laughs> But I also remember at that time, the council, one of the things, what I don't think a lot of people knew at Ladle is, as much as I argued when you were in the room, I was also one of your biggest defenders when you weren't. Because mm -hmm. one of the things that I brought forward was the connection between food bank, Ladle and the market. And at the time, Drew and I had lots of talks about um, how, what, so that there was no waste. And that was one of the things of your kitchen was to have like total sustainability so that, you know, what the market didn't sell and what um, food banks, if they had extra of, could go and be used. Or if like the vegetables were getting to a point where students might not necessarily take them home, but they were still usable to go to the ladle and then the ladle could use them, could repurpose this food because as you all know, um, just speaking to the choir, that there's a lot of food that people, if they don't see it, they're shot, like a supermarket quality, then they're thinking, oh, it's bad, but it's not. Um, so I thought that that was like a wonderful thing. But yeah, I do remember those council meetings well, and I can, I can understand your side of the conversation about how you might've felt that there was so much pushback. There was a lot of pressure on us as a council about the legalities of it all. Um, and then there was a little bit of an issue about the kitchen that was supposed to have been a community kitchen and shared by several groups. And then at the time, and not wasn't the first group, but for a short while, there was a group in there that was using the ladle kitchen, like from ladle, that was like, no, it's our kitchen. So we had issues with that as a council, but I mean, those were all workable things and they all, they all seen their way through them. But it was, yeah, it was very interesting discussions. It opened my eyes a lot on the sustainability of food and about different ways um, that you can reach people about food because you've come up with some really brilliant ideas and things. But it also, I think the pushback you got with the garden in that is then you have the Tupper where it's the, they have the food, the, what is it? The food lab or whatever. And they always, Dal always had this vision that if they're not doing it, nobody else should. So a lot of their things, including um, the food bank, Dal has tried to take over different times um, through their food lab initiative and doing, I, I don't know, because it never came to fruition. They had a lot of big, grandiose ideas. But yeah, no, I, yeah, I, that, that is my thoughts on the council. And so we weren't all like neo-Nazi liberals and <laughs> really against you. And so I was just like, I was going to let you know sooner, but then I'm like, no, I just love and I'm loving to hear these comments. Yay. <laughs> um, crash me. I'll just sit here and laugh. Um, <laughs> it was, um, 
it was, I, I think that most of the council understood it and liked the idea. Um, there were some people, like a lot of the international students and in that, because of the market societies that they came from, um, had to wrap their heads around it because they kind of already do it and they couldn't understand why we had a need for it. They didn't realize Canada didn't work that way. But I, I think, you know, I'm glad that you stuck to it and dragged that, so all those salads to our meetings and <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's great yeah thank you i don't it's sort of an interesting strategy too because it's it's definitely um i mean and like yeah i don't know that we like any of us were actually vegan at the time but or like some of us were for sure but that wasn't like but yeah that's such an interesting strategy to bring food to a meeting when it's like definitely a type of food that not everybody likes like not it's we like tried a, to make we tried to make like better food like good food but it wasn't like definitely like it, there wasn't universal appeal so i'm like oh that was a, that was a bold move <laughs> well the one meeting with the salad was um showing <laughs> that what you could do with leftover food and food that would mm -hmm. so that it did make its way into the compost before it's time um and i think that that's how it ended up being vegan um, but it just seemed like after that, for a while, I kind of had vegans coming out of the woodwork after me. And like, what did I do? To you? Um, but oh, my only other funny story about that was the time that I tried to give some bread to the ladle. That was only a couple of years ago. And I was told no because it wasn't vegan. And I'm like, oh, no. so down the food bank, we're like, we're just going to go up and we're going to take a cart and slide it slowly around the corner. And <laughs> and you also put all that corn in the <laughs> kitchen that one time? What? I don't know if anyone else remembers, but one day we came into the kitchen, it was just full of corn. <laughs> that was me. That was me. It was, was you? Was or, me. Orientation barbecue or something. <laughs> no, no, yeah, it was, so much corn. Had, no, we had, um, because of the summertime, pre-COVID, we, the farmers um, would give off, like at the end of the season, they always have so much that they give for donation. And we were getting like huge, huge bags of corn, like the size of me. And we were getting like six and seven. And I remember, and I'm like, okay, I can only give out so much corn. And then at that time, like as if anybody remembers where the food bank originally started, we were literally in a utility hallway. Um, like in the basement? Upstairs. Yeah, we're still in the basement, yeah. but we're not in the utility closet anymore. Um, we didn't even have a ceiling and it was kind of scary keeping some of the food items so it was like okay I'm just going to take it to the ladle but I remember and oh help me with his name um um you're you're in charge of your kitchen now or Brennan? what Brennan yes yeah I was like come get this corn <laughs> and it was like, and he thought it was there. They thought it was just going to be a little bit of corn. It was like, <laughs> uh, eggs of corn. and I'm like, and I remember them saying, I said, do you need more corn? I'm like, no, no, I think we're good. I said, well, I'm sending you another bag. Anyhow, I don't care. <laughs> That's like farmers with zucchinis, just like tucking zucchinis yeah. in the backseat of people's cars. <laughs> yeah. Okay. One other thing that I think like comes up for me as like a, a shortcoming or something that like upon reflection we like kind of really missed uh, was just like the like seeing the connection with like peasant you know peasants and workers and the sort of like international internationalness of like the struggles for food sovereignty and um, but like we we never really like or at least like when we were around we didn't really connect with like the workers of Dal, like the Sidexo and Aramark workers themselves. And so like, and I don't know if that changed, but the, that kind of like labor struggle and class struggle and food, like the ways those are connected, I think was like not something that like pictured it, like as far as I can remember that we really like figured into our work. Um, I remember us kind of like supporting the like Dell faculty when they were like striking, but not or the threat of um, gonna strike or gonna have some labor action. But that's like a very sort of different class of worker than sort of like the frontline Sodexo workers. And I've seen like successful campaigns at like 
you know, at York and uh, other places where those, you know, there's like lots of student support for those workers and their campaigns for higher wages. And like, I don't know, like that's one of my like re retrospectives, like it would have been cool to like figure that in. Um, and also like, I'm not sure we like fully got our, not, like it's like cool, Airmark is bad because they have all these contracts with prisons, but I'm not sure we like unpacked that enough to like make that accessible to like students and what it's not just like, ew, prison food is gross and we shouldn't have it on campus which I think is like maybe how that came across, but like actually prisons as institutions are like bad and need to be abolished and like the corporations that support them, we shouldn't support. And like, I don't, I feel like we didn't like have like flesh out that analysis in a way that like, I don't know, our like shitty pamphlets <laughs> like <laughs> uh, our weapons didn't like, you know, get to, but those were sort of the last things on my like kind of notes. I was like, oh, like could have could have thought of that. Prison mm -hmm. industrial complex zine is actually pretty good. Like I, I think it covers a lot of ground in in four little pages, uh, and a lot of the food imperialism zines are on our website if you ever want to peruse them. Mm -hmm. I think what I'm really happy about is I I don't know if you ever made a conscious decision, but I think we did have to, as part of the levy fight, we we did kind of leave some of the visible confrontation, confrontational activism to the side and I think the hope was let's become in some ways institutionalized so that so that there's there's a real foundation for this and once that's happened bring that back in and at least in my time we never got to the point where that could could really come back in outside of maybe some solidarity servings um and I think the idea too was in terms of drawing people in uh have have conversations with people and 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 let them come to it and instead of it being so in your face and i think i think they were kind of both going at the same time both of those philosophies and it's it's great now to see a ladle that is inclusive like i think misha's point's really good like it wasn't a super inclusive um Thing to begin with and it's grown into that and that's fantastic um but it's also it seems like it's still really radical like it seems like that part of it has really come back um in a way that we either didn't have time for or left behind for whatever reason um so that's really cool i want to share one uh physical object too um some memorabilia when we were doing the levy thing, we made all these buttons and t-shirts. And I still have one of the t-shirts. Um, oh, yay. Oh, nice. <laughs> I think Value Village and got all these t-shirts and like screen printed them. And mm -hmm. mine is falling apart. Um, but I still wear it for good luck sometimes under other things, even though it's way too small for me now. You still have that yeah. print. I have Do you remember of any print. of the names that it was going to be before it was loaded ladle? Oh, like, what were the trivia. other options? That's one of our trivia questions. <laughs> <laughs> There's oh, been a yeah. couple good gems of people mentioning the things that I'm later going to ask in trivia. I'm like, oh. <laughs> well, that's the one. Uh, yeah, I don't. We should hold them. Yes, yeah. hold them. Okay. <laughs> You have a pin with the same logo, Misha. <laughs> I have, yeah, I have. Actually, I think I have a couple of the pins from back then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Does anybody that's like the current board members and volunteers have questions for people that were involved earlier? You can also type it in the chat. If oh, yeah. You, if you don't want to. 
talk, you can. I feel like all my questions are so boring, but they have to do with like, ooh, what, why did you do this bylaw? Or how come it was a cooperative rather than a nonprofit society? Um, so maybe I won't bore everyone with this question. <laughs> I'm sure, like, yeah, I'm sure you could also just like email us after. Yeah. I wrote a lot of the initial policies, like after I graduated from Dell, there was this like, we like, the sort of people who took over the project from us, we like did a weekend transition with them. And at a certain point they like got a little upset with us and we're like, you guys need to let go. Cause we were like <sighs> being really like Owen, Owen Bridge was like one of the sort of next iterations and like a Holly Lopsinger and like, uh, Holly. um, yeah and I think we just like had poured our like hearts and souls into it and didn't want to like didn't want it to change and so we're just like drilling them about all the politics and procedures and this and that and like at a certain point they're like okay you like you gotta stop like, you know, which I thought was really like and Krista Bell like joined at that point too and I, I know is like still really involved in the city and so I, it's also really cool to me that a lot of that iteration of people are still like in Nova Scotia doing like rad food work and like mm -hmm. that's really cool but yeah like it's like okay we left but then I like <laughs> took one last contract with the ladle like writing all the policies because like yeah it was like so yeah crucial to my like heart and soul and political development and then after I did that Krista was like for real like <laughs> 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 So happy to get like yeah, happy to like engage with like nitty gritty. I want to get to trivia. <laughs> yeah, trivia. Does anybody else have any last last words before trivia? I want I to have, share. Oh, I just good. I have to take off now. Yeah. Thank, thank you for inviting me to your party. <laughs> yeah. And, thank uh, you for coming. Great. And see you all later. See you, Michelle. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Okay, trivia. Oh, I wanted to share that. Sandra, like, were you about to say something? Oh, Sonia, yeah. were you about to say something? Yeah, that I have like a, I I think that I'm just rem like remembering where or realizing that like, so basically I I I have a spoon collection, um, and I think this is where it comes from, and I'm just kind of putting this together now, <laughs> um, but uh. <laughs> Are they like and big spoons, like a little curved at the bottom? <laughs> well, most of them are small, but when Xander pulled out his memorabilia, I just wanted to bring out this one, which was, oh, wow, the, the background is doing a weird thing. Um, oh, nice. This is kind of a ridiculous, um, like, silver-plated ladle that my parents <laughs> gifted to me recently I just finished a, a, I just finished my PhD and they like mailed this ladle to me as a, like, <laughs> I don't think really connecting themselves the dot but they thought that this was an appropriate gift and I just, <laughs> anyway so there's actually a miniature one too so um this is making me feel very yeah uh -huh. yeah does anybody have a tattoo like a little tattoo oh yes um rachel has one right really i think so jake so i don't know if any of you met jake but jake had designed a screen print that said no corporate carrot and then rachel delano who was one of our board members for like three or four years got it tattooed oh my god yes no <laughs> corporate carrot <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to show the? Yeah, and I also yeah. I wanted to say I yeah. think Kat, maybe you can tell me if this is true. Is this one of the things that's still on the screen at Rad Storm? So we like yeah, we still have that printed, on the <laughs> and the the no corporate carrots yeah. is on the same one too. I think. Uh, okay, so this is great. Designs, that screen is lives on. Yeah. <laughs> more OG memorabilia. <laughs> so Sue has this item. Um, for the trivia, if you want to answer the question, you can put your, oh no, drop a, a star into the chat. So uh, there will be prizes of market money for the brewery market. So if you um, answer a question, then you've got to stick around and send me your contact info. 
is this one of the yes this questions? is the yes this is a perfect okay, segue. okay so great. does anybody know what this object is this magical object but maybe if you currently work at the label domain no i think it's good if you currently <laughs> yes? work at the label. Okay. yeah i do the questions that were like i just did it as an example so i put a star in the chat if you want to answer it put a star in the chat and then whoever puts the star first it's kind of like you like push the buzzer first you know uh, and then okay and then you get a chance to answer and if you get it wrong we'll go down the go down the list so okay. put a star or an eight i feel like doing the shift you might it might you know okay type anything in the chat really if you it want has some beans I know that some people know this. Wait, what is the question? Is this a question? <laughs> the this question is, what is this? <laughs> this is the old, okay, Sean, Sean, <laughs> what is it? Yeah, okay. I don't know if it's a trick question, but to me, it looks like a ladle. Yes. It is. Yes. Is it? yes, okay. It is. I was not sure if it was like something <laughs> different because it, but it's a special ladle. Do you happen to know what event it has to do with? I don't know. Okay. Anybody else? Competition, competition with the same name. Almost the same name. Well, it's our competition. Yeah. Starts with an I. <laughs> I <laughs> wait wait. Oh wait, nope. Well, are you saying something, Sage? Oh, oh George is dropping a star. Yes. yes, George. Is it the iron ladle? Yes! <laughs> I'm not gonna answer any of them because I edited the question. It's the iron <laughs> ladle. <laughs> so we have a cooking uh well usually we didn't have it this year because of COVID, but we have a cooking competition where we get different teams to come in and cook. And then people uh, vote, there's like a secret ballot box. And then this is actually a key, is that if you want to get your prizes, you have to come to the AGM. And that's when we award the uh -huh. nurse. So that's how we get forum at our AGM. <laughs> <laughs> and Sue shared with me that like each little piece on the iron ladle, they're like added year by year it wasn't originally with these beans on it <laughs> maybe by year 20 it'll become the golden lady Ooh. So. um so this question is like multi-step if anyone just wants to bravely volunteer to answer it without knowing what it is put a star in the chat What era is it? Uh, current, I would say. Oh, so you should put a star in the yeah, chat now. Yeah, if you want to answer. Okay. Who wants to take? Who wants to take a risk? Or I can, I can tell you, I can preview the question. Has the ladle put this item into a cake? Sriracha, cantaloupe, beets, <laughs> and a kombucha scoby. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so cap is the well. I was at the meeting where we discussed all the different things. Okay, so I know the answer. You. So, yeah. I know if you were at that meeting or not, but if you weren't, no, it was staff. It. So they're good. Okay. So Wait. sriracha. Do you think it's so gone in a is, cake? So this is like all of these things except for one of them were in cakes choose the one that hasn't been put in a cake is that how the question works yes kind of but then i was like i haven't been around i don't know what's gone in every cake ever so then I, if you even get some of it right i will say yes <laughs> Wait, what, what are the options okay, again? So has sriracha been in a cake do you think so yes or no uh, i'm gonna say yeah it has. <laughs> there were some sriracha cookies that were really good. Um, cantaloupe, do you think it has gone in a ladle cake? Yes. Yes, it has. <laughs> <laughs> Beets, do you think it's gone in a ladle cake? Yeah. Yeah, it's like more standard than flour. <laughs> so and then a kombucha scoby, do you think it's gone in a cake? No. Sage? I guess. <laughs> Has it not gone in a cake, but it has gone in a dessert? 
I don't know, but I just thought of something that was plausible, but I hadn't heard of. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so maybe it has. Maybe it has. I don't think so. I think that was a total 100% right answer. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Woo! I'm a winner! <laughs> You're fucking killing this. <laughs> Um, okay, so which space has the ladle not cooked out of? Part of this was one of the things that you got a hint earlier if you were here the whole time. A, DD's, B, the servery slash shared kitchen, C, the women's center, D, our own kitchen, or E, a bus shelter. <laughs> which one has the ladle not cooked, not out, cooked of? out of? Anyone? Anyone? They're hard. It's also plausible. <laughs> what was the option that was the servery and then what was the one after the servery? The women's center. Oh, oh, was the servery paired? Slash with shared kitchen. Oh, okay. So it's Didi, the servery oh. slash shared kitchen, the women's center, our own kitchen, or a bus shelter. Which one has not been served out of? Okay, shown is shown is Okay, I'll the budget. Bye, Sonia. Thank you Bye, so much. Sonia. It's so nice. Thank you all. Thank so great you. to see you and meet you. Bye. Bye, Sonia. Bye. Um, and Sean, you'd like to answer? Is one of the options bus shelter? Yeah. It is. That one. Is, that I don't think that that one. You're right. <laughs> I don't, know if that's I don't know if that's allowed. I guess if we had a barbecue. Honestly, I had doubts after this. <laughs> now I want to try to cook in a bus shelter. Um, so question, which name was in the running for the loaded ladle name before it became the loaded ladle? A, Tofu Collective. No food. No food. <laughs> B, the lucky ladle. Ooh. B, the pleasant fart. <laughs> D, stupid good lunch. Oh. <laughs> or E, chartwells. Copyrighted for chartwells. TM. <laughs> Oh, K is K. Yes. The pleasant fart. Yes. yes. The pleasant fart. <laughs> I think Xander was really advocating for that one. It yeah. was? Well, that was Ryan. That was all Ryan. Okay. I was gonna say, was that your idea? <laughs> that was yeah. an actual yeah. proposed name? The pleasant fart. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. It was. Maybe part of the whole unrelatability side of things is just really weird. So we can all relate to pleasant parts. That is really relatable. One time I had, one time we had a meeting and I have a lot of social anxiety and it was one of these like five hour long visioning meetings and it was in someone's backyard and I ate kale, the whole raw kale the whole time to deal with my social anxiety. And then at like hour three, I just started like farting and farting and farting and farting. And just like, <laughs> Which like didn't yeah. help the social anxiety. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were all quoted in uh, I can't remember what the name of the Dow newspapers. No, I think it was the oh, Coast. That? The Coast. Kaylee was quoted as saying, "We don't want farty frock." Farty what? Frock? Farty frock. We were talking about farty like frock. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just remember that we booked a retreat once somewhere in the South Shore. And the people took our reservation and they were like, yeah, yeah. And then we showed up and they thought that our name was the legal ladder. <laughs> and they were like, are you the legal ladder? What exactly are you guys? Oh my God. Like, ah. <laughs> Close. And our market boxes, picking them up from the market. I think I've seen every possible variation of spelling of loaded ladle. Many, many more than I could ever imagine. <laughs> so there's two remaining questions. Um, which name, oh wait, which is not a real iron ladle, so the cooking contest team name? A, the gentle lentils. B, cuttlefish. C, the homicide. D, Desi Boys. And E, the people's potato. 
<laughs> Pop cap. Uh, I think the people's potato was an iron ladle one because that's the concord. Isn't it the Concordia? Yeah. Yes. Loaded ladle uh, equivalent. Yeah. Yes. But what was the other one that I, there was one when you were saying it? I was like, oh, that one. No, not that one. But the, the hummus. The hummus. The cuddle fish. Cuddle fish. Yeah, hummus side. Hummus side. Is the hummus side. side. <laughs> they what had a picture of Darth Vader. It was like, come to the hummus side. <laughs> what did the cuttlefish team cook? I don't know. I just remember the name. I don't know. But what it's cook. cuddle like pug. Yeah. No, Not okay. Cuddle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The last question is a technical question. Oh, what percentage of Dal students voted for the Loda Ladle to become a levied society originally? A twenty two percent, B fifty eight percent, C seventy percent, or D sixty three percent? We repeat the question. Um, what, what percentage of Dal oh. students voted for the loaded ladle to become a levied society originally? Oh, okay. Xander is Xander. Oh, yes. yes. Bring the buzzer. Okay. Um. Seventy percent. I had to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. right yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good percentage. That that was the percentage, mm -hmm. like the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, those are all the questions. Those are all the questions. So to get your um, market money, you have to give me your contact information after. Wait, so who, who won, Shown? Well, it was by Shown. question because I didn't think everyone would know all of them. So everyone who answered a question, even if it was wrong, is getting marked. <laughs> uh. um and then sage i'm wondering if it's a good time for your story and or ladle myth and then if anyone else has fun stories we can share them quickly as a yeah. a goodbye thing and i don't know if it's too much at once if i share the slideshow as you're speaking oh yeah yeah because we have a photo slideshow I'm just noticing. I'd like to see the slideshow. Great. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're going to get kicked out in so, 17 minutes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they close at eight. So, Sage, if you want to tell your. Yeah. So, I was trying to think of um, fun loaded ladle stories and slash or urban legends that I could share. Um, and there was a huge theme of like uh, really weird food. So, mostly I'll be telling you about weird food foods that have happened <laughs> recently um but also we'll start I guess with an urban legend um someone once was telling me I think it was actually from cap and from a manager um Craig they were, I don't know if you guys ever dealt with Craig hey, Kennedy. No they were like oh, look at originally <laughs> in the early days of the loaded ladle there was a person who stirred a giant pot of stew using their entire bare arm. <laughs> um, so that's the best urban legend that I've heard. Um, my favorite poster that we've had in the kitchen was one uh, that said, no gods, no masters, no recipe. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yes. Um, Love that. Classic, but also that same. Yeah. <laughs> that same philosophy is probably related to the Sriracha cake. Um, also, you know, volunteers sometimes make mistakes. Earlier this year, we made a cake. Uh, we had the volunteer grab the sugar. She put in like the probably about eight cups um, to 16 cups of. Uh, we mixed it, we put it in the oven. It came out and we realized it had been salt. Oh. Uh, and then there was sort of a. Um, some conversation about whether or not to serve the salt oh cake. Oh my god! <laughs> no. 
okay, it's really salty. Or to be like, no, this is going in the compost. Um, <laughs> so some of the salt cake was served. Oh my then, god! And then what it did? People like, actually it. ate it. <laughs> served. Oh my goodness. Well, no, people got it in their food box and then probably took a bite and then probably <laughs> it, it found its own way to the compost. Yeah, yeah. Um, two of my favorite comments. Um, last year, we had a lot of volunteers coming from ISANS, Immigrant Services Association of Nova Scotia. Uh, so mostly newcomers who will kind of it's Mohammed. Their, uh, Mohammed is a newcomer um, who used to come like every week um, but one time we had a like a young couple in and their reaction was like wow like you eat very unusual food in Canada like <laughs> Canadian cuisine is much different than what we're used to and I was there trying to be like yeah, like, I guess this is Canadian cuisine, but also not exactly. <laughs> His own special. Like, don't, you might have the wrong idea. <laughs> like, but there was a, a language barrier as well. So uh, they got that impression. Um, and then I guess I saved the best one for last, which is the worst thing I've ever had at the Loaded Ladle. Um, we had a volunteer come in and she was looking at our apple cider vinegar and she goes, oh, you know, you can just make that by fermenting skins, right? Which sounded really great because I had already made a bunch of pickles. I had been fermenting some kombucha. So it seemed like it couldn't be that much harder. I had made like a kombucha vinegar already uh, so we took a bunch of apple peels and we put them all in our jar and we waited for three weeks to let them ferment. Um, and then I was smelling it to see if it was ready. And I couldn't tell, like it smelled kind of vinegary and kind of appley, but a little bit wrong. So I decided that I would like pour a little shot of it and, and taste test it. And it was indescribable. I can't <laughs> tell you it was not vinegar. It was just apple juice that had been sitting out for fully a month. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes you volunteer or work at the ladle, you come away with some some scars. <laughs> Apple cider <laughs> related. Pleasant charts. Um, <laughs> pleasant charts. Yeah, those are some tales of ladle lore. Awesome, thank you. So I think that if anybody else has any stories, we have 10 more minutes before we're getting kicked out of the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and if not, we can just play happy birthday and Yay! say goodnight. <laughs> I'll get the sign. <laughs> Thanks for coming. And if you... Um, answer the question, make sure you send me your contact information. <laughs> in the chat, or you can email me at nico at the loaded ladle dot C A. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Someone can have my winnings if, if they want. Nice. <laughs> thank you two so much for telling the story about how it all started I really like there were so many parts that weren't what was written down I think it was a really good discussion yeah I feel like there's all these bits and pieces that had gotten lost and now they're kind of like back filling it out again mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I really appreciated that and all of your thoughts too about going from more of like an activist centered group to kind of becoming like a food serving institution and then trying to meld those two like the social or like the social environmental food justice piece back in with the serving piece I think that's still something that we're always talking about like not just being a free like we're not just a place yeah. for free food. like there's yeah. an actual um, reason that we're doing things so making sure that that is still incorporated in the ladle so it's really nice to hear you guys talk about how those values sh shaped um, the beginning of the organization. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we talked a lot and it was, it was just like, very cathartic for us to like connect with, and but I also wish we could hear more of um, how things are going now. Cause I think we were, I mean, just even knowing who like, just from what we see, it seems like such a, just like great and like skilled project and like, but yeah, I'd love to hear more, but also I'm gonna be in Halifax and yeah. Hey, so we'll like try That's to great. stop by and That's like, okay. yeah, yeah. Check our brains. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really sweet to feel part of like a bigger thing. Like, yeah, just to hear the origins. And I just kind of echo what Cap said. Yeah, it's something, something that I would be interested in, uh, Kaylee and Xander, um, is like learning where p lots of people that did some of their original work or were on the original boards like ended up later. Like I sort of vaguely know that people like did more rad food work or other rad work later in their lives, but I don't know all the people, so it's hard to keep track. And it would be interesting to like see some of the ways that um, working with our group has been foundational for people in what they do later. Like I think one of our one of our best ways that we still do radical work is as a learning space and a, a place where people like first encounter uh or first dig into some rad politics yeah i think xander and i years, like xander and i stayed for, or, like are still very good friends and like um i remember a couple of years ago we're chatting about how it's interesting how I think at the time Xander was like, I'm the only one who's still doing food justice work. And he was working at, um, at another food project uh, in Toronto. But like many of us of our cohort were like doing radical organizing, um, doing uh, migrant justice work in Montreal or like many of us ended up involved in like um, anti-pipeline and indigenous solidarity work in Southern Ontario. Um, and like Michigan and in the like four corners, what Ryan's doing labor organizing. Yeah. If there's things that like are, are open and you would be down to send like a list of some of the projects that, that we have that like, I don't, I don't know, alumni is a weird word, but like alumni connection <laughs> too. Yeah, um, that's something I, I would like to collect the lineage loaded ladle lineage i love i love the documentation work that like xander started and how you guys have like continued that like archiving is such a like important radical project that's really cool yay, yay. <laughs> thanks everybody yeah thanks for really coming nice. happy guys... birthday loaded ladle what's that xander Thank you guys for organizing this. Yeah, really doing it. It's it's un, it's unbelievable. It really is like to to have been a part of something that's still going and has grown and has touched so many people and will continue to grow. And like, I really look forward to seeing everybody in uh, twenty thirty one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.